Welcome to Bible Logos. My name is Teandra Rowden, and I am your broadcast host. Today, I can't wait to present to you part three of a message entitled, God is not a respecter of persons, but God is a respecter of faith. Remember to like and share this message on social media with your family and friends. All right, get ready for part three of God is not a respecter of persons, but God is a respecter of faith. So what I want to talk about today is the fact that God is not a respecter of person. Because sometimes we think, well, you know, he's like, someone's so better than he like me. Or, or he, his, his favorite people are you. He don't have so much favor upon us, so we just glad to be saved. That's all we can expect from God is just, just the fact that he lets us cross over on that cross over Jordan. And that is enough for me, and, I'm, and that's, that's sufficient for me. But that is not sufficient for God, and that is not God's will for his people. But we've got to get in tune with God so that God can perform unto us what he has ordained to perform in our lives. Look at somebody and say, it's just easier. God is not a respecter of person, but God is a respecter of faith. First point I want to make is this. It is just easier to bless folk who will believe his word. It is just easier to bless the folk who will believe his word. Do you realize that unbelief stops the power of God? We hear people talk all the time about, you know, well, God is sovereign. And he's going to do what he want to do, when he want to do, how he wants to do it. Then we shout. <laughs> and yes, God is sovereign. And yes, God's going to do what he wants to do, when he wants to do, and how he wants to do it. But we've got a role to play in our own blessing. We've got a part to play in our own blessing. And God, unbelief stops the power of God. Well, I got a problem with that preacher because see, God, is, he can do everything but fail. Well, he can't lie. Come on now. He can't change. So he can't do everything. And something else he cannot do is bless somebody who will not receive his blessing. I promise you, God will not save someone who says, I don't want to be saved. He will, he will wait until that person turns around and decides, okay, I'm going to be saved. Then he'll save them. And that's the same thing with every other promise and every other blessing of God. He's not forcing his blessings yes. upon his people. He gives us choices. He gives us options. He presents us with, these, with, these, with, with, the, with the gift. He presents us with the opportunity. And it's up to us to decide whether we want it or not, yes. whether we believe it or not. Yes. Mark chapter 6. Let me show you what I'm coming from because I know some people got an issue with me saying this. So let me, come, let me show you the scripture. Mark chapter 6. I'm going to jump down to some verses. I'm going to start at verse 1. I'm going through verse 6, but I'm, I'm jumping through that. I'm going to do this from the English Standard Version of the Bible. It starts out by saying that he went away from there and came to his hometown. Jesus had been going around ministering all over the place, and so now he comes back home. Down to verse 3, it says, his home folk took offense at him. Look at verse 4. And Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And look at verse 5. And he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Notice what it said there. It didn't say he would do no mighty work there. It said he couldn't do it. Why? Look at verse 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Their unbelief is so powerful, it's so strong, it stopped the power of God from operating. He marveled. How can somebody have so much unbelief? You see that there? So even though the Bible says that he will make me to be the head and not the tail, even though the Bible promises me that he'll pour out upon me exceeding great and precious promises, even though the Bible tells me all of these things that God will do for me, I've got to believe his yeah. word and get yeah. in tune with his word because yeah. if I don't believe it for myself, if I don't believe that it yeah. applies to me, it can't happen. Yeah. 
So when we say, well, God is a respecter of persons, God is not a respecter of persons, but God is a respecter of faith. I've got to link myself up with what God promised me in his word in order for me to see the manifestation of what God promised me in his word. Let me look at the second one. The second one is this. God is not a respecter of person, but God is a respecter of faith. It is just easier to bless the folk who will obey his word. Now remember the first one. The first one is that it is easier to bless the folk who will believe his word. The second one is, is that it is easier to bless the folk who will obey his word. Obedience precedes the blessing. Obedience always comes before the blessing. Read it in your scripture. Welcome back. Isn't that a powerful word? Don't miss tomorrow when we come back with part four of the message, God is not a respecter of persons, but God is a respecter of faith. I need you to do me a favor. Like and share this message with friends and family. I am your host, Tiandra Sprouting, and I want you to remember that the sower sows the word, and therefore, it is with the same measure that you meet that it shall be measured to you again.